Have you ever wondered how the Akkadian Empire, known as the first empire in world history, came to be? Today we delve into the remarkable chronicles of this ancient civilization, its rise and eventual fall, and the intriguing culture it cultivated. Our tale begins around 4,300 years ago in the region now known as Iraq. At this time the Akkadian Empire was merely a city-state, a small dot on the vast landscape of Mesopotamia. Yet under the rule of Sargon the Great, who reigned from 24th to 23rd century BCE, this city-state transformed into an empire. Sargon is remembered for his military prowess, expanding his realm through relentless conquests and establishing the world's first empire. As we delve deeper into the historical archives, we accompany a man who was instrumental in defining the destiny of the Akkadian Empire, Sargon the Great. Born in the most modest of circumstances, Sargon's name, signifying true king, was a foreshadowing of the magnificent heights his life would ascend to. His early life, steeped in enigma and folklore, is said to echo the biblical narrative of Moses, with Sargon being left adrift in a basket on the river to evade an ominous destiny. From this murky inception, Sargon's rise to power was nothing short of meteoric. Initially, he entered the royal court as the cupbearer to the king of Kish, a role that granted him proximity to power and, as legend has it, provided him with the shrewd political insights required for his ascension to the throne. His employment as a cupbearer was a mere stepping stone as he boldly claimed the throne and was crowned as a king himself. Sargon's rule was characterized by a string of ambitious military campaigns that transformed the Akkadian city-state into a behemoth of an empire, stretching its reach across Mesopotamia. He commanded his forces with an incisive efficiency that was both revered and feared. City after city fell to his strategic brilliance from Uruk to Ebla, and he established Akkadian as the lingua franca across these conquered territories. Yet, Sargon's accomplishments were not confined to the battlefield. He exhibited an extraordinary administrative prowess, creating an efficient system that was crucial for managing his rapidly expanding empire. He standardized weights and measures, facilitated trade, and even introduced the use of seals for officials, thus providing a framework for the cultural innovations that would come to characterize the Akkadian Empire. His reign marked a seminal moment in history where a humble city-state dared to dream of becoming an empire and actualized it. So, accompany us as we delve deeper into the cultural richness and remarkable innovations of the Akkadian Empire in the forthcoming scene. In the grand narrative of Sargon's rule, the twilight years were fraught with challenges that tested the mettle of the Akkadian Empire. Following a reign marked by relentless expansion and cultural flourishing, the empire began to buckle under its own weight. Sargon's later years were riddled with a series of revolts and uprisings, a stark contrast to the years of his unchallenged rule. The empire he had so meticulously built began to unravel as the conquered cities, tired of the Akkadian yoke, started to rebel. The most significant of these rebellions was in the city of Ur, then a major hub of the empire. The uprising, fueled by a desire for autonomy, threatened to destabilize the empire's southern region. Sargon, in response, launched a brutal military campaign to quell the rebellion. However, the revolt in Ur was a symptom of a larger malaise that had infected the empire. Adding to Sargon's troubles were the mounting issues on the home front. The rapid expansion of the empire had stretched its resources thin, economic instability was rife, and the empire's administration, once the epitome of efficiency, struggled to maintain control over the sprawling territories. Despite these challenges, Sargon remained a formidable figure until his death. His passing marked the end of an era, but the legacy he left behind lived on shaping the cultural and innovative landscape of the Akkadian Empire as we will explore in the next scene. Following the demise of the mighty Sargon the Great, the Akkadian Empire found itself under the rule of his two sons, Raimush and Manishtushu. The transfer of power was far from seamless, as the empire grappled with the aftershocks of the revolts during Sargon's waning years. Raimush, the first to claim the throne, ruled over a turbulent era, 
His reign was a constant struggle against relentless rebellions, remnants of his father's unresolved conflicts. Despite the turmoil, Rymish's reign was not without its merits. He displayed exceptional military prowess, conquering rebelling regions and reinstating Akkadian authority. However, he was unable to quell the discontent simmering among his courtiers with internal strife and conspiracies clouding his rule. His rule ended in a brutal assassination, a grim sign of the instability that had penetrated the empire's heart. Following Remish's tragic end, his brother Manishtushu took the reins, inheriting a realm teetering on the edge. Manishtushu, however, walked a different path than his brother. He chose diplomacy and trade over military authority to stabilize the empire. He built a network of alliances with neighboring realms, bolstering Akkadian's international standing. He also fostered economic growth by encouraging trade and commerce, bringing prosperity and stability to his empire. Under his reign, the Akkadian Empire experienced a brief respite from the tumult, and the Akkadian culture blossomed. Manish Tushu's rule was marked by several architectural and cultural innovations, a testament to the peace and tranquility of his reign. The reigns of Remish and Manish Tushu were crucial chapters in the Akkadian Empire's narrative, highlighting the trials of succession and the varied strategies adopted by rulers to retain control. Their individual reigns signified a shift from Sargon's militaristic expansionism to a more balanced approach, setting the stage for the empire's cultural and innovative triumphs. In the wake of the reigns of Remush and Manishtushu, the Akkadian Empire was guided by a transformative leader, Naram Sin. His rule left not just a mark, but a chiseled engraving in the annals of the empire's history. Naram Sin ascended the imperial throne with an ambitious vision to consolidate and expand the power of the Akkadian Empire. The empire he inherited was already stable and prosperous, a testament to his predecessor, Manish Tushu's diplomatic finesse. Yet Naram Sin was not a leader who would bask in the comfort of stability. His sights were set on expansion. Under the leadership of Naram Sin, the Akkadian Empire launched an array of successful military campaigns. His strategic prowess led armies to conquer territories extending far beyond the empire's original borders, from the shores of the Mediterranean Sea to the edges of the Persian Gulf. These victories did more than just expand the empire's territory, they further solidified the Akkadian rule and established it as a formidable power to be reckoned with in the ancient world. However, Naram Sin was not solely a military tactician. His influence extended to the realm of religion. The king initiated a groundbreaking religious reform by declaring himself a god at Abge, a first in Akkadian society. This monumental shift, where a living ruler claimed divinity, was not just an assertion of his rule, but it redefined the societal fabric of the Akkadian Empire. It reshaped the relationship between the ruler and the ruled, blurring the lines between the divine and mortal realms. Naram Sin's reign was not just a period of change, but a transformative epic for the Akkadian Empire. His military conquests, religious paradigm shifts, and audacious declaration of divinity left a profound and enduring legacy. The impact of his reign was far-reaching. It marked a pivotal juncture in the Akkadian Empire's history, laying the foundation for cultural and innovative triumphs that are still marveled at today. We shall delve further into these triumphs in the following scene. In the aftermath of Naram Sin's reign, the Akkadian Empire was a formidable force, its influence reaching far and wide. The Sumerian city-states, once independent and powerful, were now under the Akkadian rule. Yet, the transition from autonomy to submission was not an easy one. The Sumerian cities, each with its own distinct culture, traditions, and history, found themselves grappling with the reality of Akkadian dominance. A new order had been established, one where the Akkadian king was not just a ruler but a god. This shift in the societal fabric led to a profound change in the dynamics between the Akkadian Empire and the Sumerian city-states. The Sumerian kings, once independent rulers, found themselves in a position of submission. Their role was not just to govern their cities but to acknowledge the supremacy of the Akkadian king. This was not merely a political act, but a religious one, as they were bowing to a god-king. Yet the Sumerian kings, in their wisdom, 
understood the need for adaptation. They embraced Akkadian language, administration, and even their religious practices, integrating them into their own cultures. This act of assimilation allowed the Sumerian cities not just to survive, but to thrive under Akkadian rule. The Sumerian culture, while retaining its unique identity, began to absorb influences from the Akkadian Empire, leading to a fascinating blend of cultures. This period of submission and assimilation set the stage for the flowering of Akkadian culture and innovations, which we will explore in the next scene. With the submission of the Sumerian kings, the Akkadian Empire found itself at the helm of a vast and diverse territory. The efficient administration of this empire was a testament to its innovative governance model and robust legal system. The Akkadian Empire was a centralized state, with the king at its apex. The king, seen as a divine figure, was not just the head of the state but also the high priest. He was assisted by a group of high-ranking officials, each responsible for different aspects of administration. This included the chief justice, the military commander, the chief scribe, and the overseer of works. The Akkadian administration was marked by a system of provinces, each headed by a governor appointed by the king. These governors were responsible for maintaining law and order, collecting taxes, and overseeing public works in their provinces. They were held accountable for their actions, ensuring a check on their power. The Akkadian Empire was also known for its comprehensive legal system. Inspired by the laws of the Sumerian city-states, the Akkadian laws were codified and enforced across the empire. These laws covered a range of issues, from property rights and trade regulations to criminal offenses and family matters. The enforcement of these laws was strict, ensuring justice and order throughout the empire. The Akkadian administration, with its centralized governance model and robust legal system, was a key factor in the empire's stability and prosperity. It ensured the smooth functioning of the empire, from the bustling cities to the farthest provinces. Furthermore, it facilitated cultural assimilation, allowing the Sumerian cities to flourish under Akkadian rule. In the next scene, we will delve deeper into the cultural and intellectual achievements of the Akkadian Empire. The Akkadian Empire was not just about conquests and governance, it was a melting pot of various cultures, each contributing to the rich tapestry of Akkadian society. The society was stratified, with the king and nobility at the top, followed by the free citizens and slaves at the bottom. Despite this hierarchical structure, there were opportunities for social mobility, especially in the bustling cities of Akkad, where trade and commerce thrived. The Akkadian culture was a blend of Sumerian and Akkadian traditions, with influences from other conquered regions. This fusion is evident in their art, architecture, and religious practices. Akkadian artists developed a unique style that combined realism with symbolism, creating masterpieces that continue to awe us even today. The Akkadian ziggurats, towering structures dedicated to their gods, are a testament to their architectural prowess. The Akkadians were pioneers in various fields including literature, art, science, and technology. The Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the oldest known pieces of literature, was written in the Akkadian language. They also made significant strides in astronomy, mathematics, and medicine, laying the groundwork for future civilizations. The Akkadian Empire's society and culture were as diverse and complex as the empire itself, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to fascinate historians and scholars. The Akkadians were not just conquerors, but also innovators, artists, and thinkers. Their contributions to human civilization are immeasurable and their story continues to inspire us, reminding us of the heights that humanity can reach. In the next scene, we will explore the territory of Akkadian Empire, the Akkadian Empire, at its zenith, stretched from the Persian Gulf in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, and from modern-day Turkey in the north to the Arabian Peninsula in the south. This vast expanse of territory was unprecedented in history, marking the Akkadians as one of the earliest empires known to mankind. The Akkadian Empire's territorial expansion was not merely a result of military conquests, but also of strategic alliances, marriages, and diplomatic negotiations. King Sargon the Great, the founder of the empire, set the tone with his ambitious military campaigns. His successors, notably Rimush, Manishtushu, and Naram-Sin, continued his expansionist policies. 
bringing more regions under Akkadian control. The empire was divided into provinces, each governed by an ensai or governor appointed by the king. These provinces were further divided into cities and towns, each with its own local administration, but under the overall control of the Akkadian king. The Akkadian Empire's control over such a vast territory facilitated the exchange of goods, ideas, and culture across different regions, leading to a period of unprecedented prosperity and cultural fusion. The trade routes established during this time helped in the spread of Akkadian language and cuneiform script, which became the lingua franca of the ancient Near East. However, managing such a vast empire was not without its challenges. Rebellions, internal conflicts, and external threats were constant issues. Despite these challenges, the Akkadian Empire managed to maintain its territorial integrity for over a century, leaving an indelible mark on the history of human civilization. In the next scene, we will delve into the final years of the Akkadian Empire and the factors that led to its decline. As with all great empires, the Akkadian Empire too had its share of internal and external challenges. Despite its vast territorial expanse and military might, the empire began to crumble under the weight of its own success. The constant need to quell rebellions and manage a sprawling empire spread across diverse geographical and cultural landscapes took a toll on the empire's resources and administrative capabilities. Economic instability brought about by over-exploitation of resources, rampant corruption, and an over-reliance on tribute from conquered territories further exacerbated the situation. The empire's decline was hastened by external threats, particularly from the Gudians, a mountain tribe from the Zagros Mountains. The Gudians launched frequent raids on the Akkadian territories, weakening the empire's hold over its provinces. By around 2150 BC, the Akkadian Empire collapsed, marking the end of an era. The fall of the empire led to a period of chaos and power vacuum known as the Gutian period, characterized by political instability and economic decline. Despite its fall, the Akkadian Empire left a lasting legacy. It set a precedent for future empires, demonstrating the potential and challenges of controlling vast territories. The Akkadian language and cuneiform script continued to be used in the region for centuries, influencing subsequent cultures and civilizations. The empire's administrative and legal systems, trade networks, and cultural fusion served as a blueprint for future empires shaping the course of human civilization. Having journeyed through the rise, reign, and fall of the Akkadian Empire, let's take a moment to reflect on the lasting impact of this ancient civilization. The Akkadian Empire was more than just a historical period, it was a pivotal chapter in human civilization that left an indelible mark on subsequent cultures and societies. The empire's administrative structure, legal systems, and trade networks served as a blueprint for future empires influencing their governance and economic policies. The Akkadian language and the cuneiform script, though no longer in use, have been instrumental in helping historians decipher the ancient world, shedding light on our collective past. Furthermore, the legacy of the Akkadian Empire can still be seen in modern Mesopotamia. The region's rich history and cultural heritage can be traced back to the Akkadian era, attesting to the empire's enduring influence. In recent years, the Akkadian Empire has also found its way into popular culture, becoming a source of inspiration for literature, films, and video games. This enduring fascination with the Akkadian Empire is a testament to its grandeur and influence. So as we conclude, remember that the Akkadian Empire, though long gone, continues to echo through the ages. Its legacy serves as a reminder of human ingenuity, ambition, and the drive to build, conquer, and leave a lasting mark on history. At last, remember, leave a comment, like, and share this video, and subscribe to our channel. We will appreciate if you do that. Goodbye and farewell.